All right, we're going to pick up right where we left off last time, ladies and gentlemen. We left off with the, uh, we were talking about the skeletal system last time, and I said today on the next lecture, we would talk about the muscular system. And so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to talk about the muscular system. And Almost done with body systems, a little bit further to go. Okay, so I said, uh, like I said, today we're going to talk about the muscular system. Now, uh, the skeletal system we talked about the other day was mainly for dealt with the support of the body and protection of, of the vital organs in the body, especially like the heart, lungs, everything like that. Muscular system is involved with the body's locomotion, okay? Uh, it's the body tissue that's made up of bundles of contractile fibers, and we'll get into it. It's, it's way more complex uh, than you think the muscles actually contracting, so we're going to get into that. There's a definite exchange uh, between a nerve impulse and the actual muscles that actually, they call it firing when the muscle contracts. There are three different types of muscles we're going to discuss, voluntary, uh, involuntary, and cardiac. Okay, cardiac is also kind of falls under the involuntary, uh, involuntary framework, but um, it's separate because there are certain things that, uh, certain characteristics that only apply to cardiac muscle because cardi your heart is the only muscle that can never rest. And uh, muscular system is involved with uh, things that you don't even think about, like moving your eyes, tilting your head, uh, frowning. I think frowning takes uh, 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 takes several. I think it's seventy-two muscles or something like that uh, to frown, and and they say it only takes one to smile. Okay, uh, just to kind of recap, um, we talked about the circulatory system, but musculature, by way of the cardiac muscle, is involved with that. Also. The digestive system is heavily involved with smooth muscle, which is involuntary muscle. And when I say involuntary, it means that really the cardiac center or the brain stem actually controls the uh, it controls the the movement or the action of. It. So you don't have, in other words, you don't have to think about your heart beating. You don't have to think about your sockets doing peristalsis and squeezing the food down. You don't have to think about your stomach churning and and your uh, intestines moving food along. All that stuff is, is is done without you thinking about it. That's what involuntary means. Okay, and the skeletal system, once again, is made up of bones and ligaments, and they provide a firm base for what the, the muscles to attach. And one of the reasons, um, especially uh, people studying uh, uh, medicine and stuff like that, have to learn about physics and stuff. It's really about pulleys and hinges and stuff like that. Because that's the way the different muscles work to, uh, like, uh, like flex a muscle or move an arm or something like that. Also, uh, the key player in muscles, uh, the interaction of muscles and muscles working is the nervous system, because the nerve impulses are what activates muscles to fire. All muscles, including the cardiac muscle, which it has to continuously work. I want to think about the cardiac muscle or the heart. Uh, that's interesting is that it's just like a, it is like a regular muscle. So the more you work it, the stronger it gets. That's why, like, in terms of heart attacks, believe it or not, the older a person is and the longer uh, their heart is beat, the stronger it is. OK, so uh, somebody 25 is more likely not to not to survive a heart attack, less likely to survive a heart attack than somebody that's 95, believe it or not. Okay, like I said, involuntary muscle, muscle you can't control. Uh, the smooth muscle uh, is mostly involves the function of the internal organs. It's found in the bladder and the gallbladder. Once again, it's things you don't have to really think about. The cardiac muscle is not attached to any bones or joints, but it is to the other cardiac muscles, and it's only found in the heart. So there's a whole sack kind of, of muscle and tissue that the heart sits in just to the kind of left center of your chest. 
And then once again, voluntary muscles, your biceps, all the muscles that you control. And you can, you, a lot of times you can tell a, a, a voluntary muscle because those are the ones that really get sore. Other muscles get sore, but the ones you can uh, voluntarily use like your biceps and stuff, throwing, passing, snowboarding, whatever you do, um, those are, uh, you know, the voluntary muscles get sore. Also, skeletal, skeletal muscle makes up about 40% of your, uh, of, of your, of a person's body, a man's body, and 23% of a woman's. All right. Um, major muscles in the body, your facial muscles are used to make expressions. Uh, neck is very important. Um, uh, moves, it, it moves entirely by two muscles, the sternohyoid and the sternocleidomastoid. Okay. And these are the muscles that enable you to go like this. And let me tell you, if you injure your neck, uh, normally it's a pinched nerve, but I mean, that is like one of the, uh, it's very painful. I had a, uh, uh, an injury, you know, my only, only had two injuries playing football, one to my knee and I actually injured my neck, uh, sacking the quarterback when I was a junior in high school. And, um, it was a badly pinched nerve. And the funny thing about like, uh, you know, high school, you, you know, the age you are now, you're you know, such, I was in such good shape and so hyped up that uh, I came home for, I did, I did it on Friday night and I didn't feel a thing Friday or Saturday, but Sunday morning, I couldn't lift my head off the pillow and they, they took me to the hospital. Uh, shoulders work together to move the shoulder area, allowing you to pick up or throw objects. Okay. And uh, it's the muscles and tendons in your shoulder uh, that, and in your elbow, that the, the motion of throwing uh, can, can definitely affect them. Uh, I won't go into great detail as this surgery that in my lifetime uh, was created in your lifetime, it's, it's, it has become routine now. It's called Tommy John surgery. And it, it's uh, serious pitchers can, uh, who to basically mess up their arm and the tendons in the elbow can have it and and, and pitch some more, but um, it, it really comes from messing their arm up, throwing a curveball. All right, your arm and biceps allow you to bring your forearm close to your body, and there, there are peculiar things about like your arm muscles. Like you can bring your forearm close to your body, but uh, uh, the the other day, and so they said it. I saw it on TV, and it's true. You cannot put your palm on your shoulder. It's interesting. Uh, your, your muscles allow you to do everything with that. Your forearm, your brachial radialis and palmaris, they control the lower part of the arm and the wrist. Okay, because remember, you got two bones here, the ulnar and the radius. I was telling you my story about how I cracked my radius. And uh, the muscles in there control uh, you know, both of the, uh, the bones and, and the wrist. Thorax, this is pect pectoralis major and minor. Uh, that's these uh, muscles up here, help support the head, arm, stomach, and other areas of the body. Okay, I'm um, sure so you've heard the term abdomen. It's uh, another a country way of saying it would be your belly. Okay, and it's your waist side to side, your hip, gluteus maximum and medius. Okay, otherwise known as your buttocks. Okay, the function of the limbs let you straighten your leg when you're walking and running also gives you something to sit on. Pelvis and thigh muscles that uh, help you run, walk, and jump. Your abductor group is a set of muscles that go from the pubic bone uh, down the femur or the thigh bone. Okay, so that, let, let, let's hear down. Uh, and some of these, the abductor longest move uh, the thigh inward and let's rotate to the side. The hamstring, if you ever pull a hamstring or to the, heaven forbid if you ever tear it you would know a hamstring is the hams back there or, or also known as your quadriceps okay and they occupy the front and side of the leg the plantar and dorsal flexors work together and support the body they also allow, allow you to move your leg a lot of these uh, if you're lucky you won't really ever know that you have a lot of these muscles until you like i said i don't know if you've ever pulled a muscle but it feels like somebody's like taking a knife and just like digging in there. Not good. 
Okay, what do muscles look look like? They're a bundle of muscle fibers that will uh, that will lie over each other, and specifically, when the muscle the, the muscle fires or contracts, it it is all the most all of individual fires contracting at once, because the the individual fiber is like a muscle cell. Okay, and when the muscle cell uh, receives the, like the, the neurotransmitter telling it to fire, then the whole thing fires and it'll shorten and, and contract. But there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And we're gonna, I'm, I might talk to you briefly about, uh, maybe not today, but I might, I just feel it, it's important to know the, uh, how muscle contracts because if you've ever gotten a cramp like swimming and stuff like that, uh, it's due to, normally it's due to, it, it can be due to a lack of, uh, of water, but most of the time it's the lack of potassium, okay? Because there's an exchange between potassium and sodium into and out of the muscle cell, uh, not to get too deep, but it, cre uh, it creates a wave of depolarization. And that's when the, uh, the, the, the charges of potassium and sodium uh, flow into and out of the cell causing a contraction. We'll, we'll get into that next time. Anyway, uh, for, your, for your muscle to flex, it's a whole lot of stuff that has to go on. All right, how is the movement of muscles produced? It's a system of, of levers. And that's why, uh, you know, if you picture like a pulley, like for example, when you, uh, when, when you flex your bicep, okay, the muscle back here, has to relinquish a little bit for this muscle to shorten. And when you extend your arm, it's almost the opposite. If you notice this muscle relinquishes and this one back here tightens up. Okay, how to keep your muscles healthy and a healthy life. Taking care of your muscles is incredibly important. You need food for energy, rest to recover, you know, and exercise to keep them strong. Also, it's important to stretch your muscles before and after activity. A lot of people don't do that, okay? And even if it's just walking or something like that, you need to stretch your muscles out. Also, you need to eat foods that are rich, hopefully, or, or drink a sports drink that's got potassium in it. You can actually get potassium. It's these little uh, tablets that you crush up and you basically you open it and dissolve it in water and drink it. It doesn't taste good. But be, you need to do that before uh, a sporting event because the reason you get cramps is a lack of potassium normally. It can be, you can get cramp, cramps if there's a, uh, a lack of salt too, okay? Um, and, but uh, one of the things I would advise against normally energy drinks, uh, energy drinks cause a lot of issues because it has things in there that make you, that will actually dehydrate you and the more you get dehydrated, the, the more your, the electrolytes like uh, sodium and potassium are depleted. Okay, but very key, I don't know if be, most of you guys be play sports, they will tell you that you need to stretch before and after uh, you do a sport event. Obviously, uh, I was a football player in college, but I, I was in the army where we were running all the time. I used to run like six miles a day. Doesn't look like it now, but uh, and one of the things I remember to do is I would stretch before I ran and then uh, I would stretch after or definitely, especially when you've been running a lot or exercising a lot, kind of stretch a little before you go to bed and you will feel a lot better and uh, you, you won't cramp up. And you won't be as sore. Uh, nutrition, uh, you eat a variety of foods. Like I said, I would suggest specifically for uh, for your muscles, like stuff like bananas have a lot of potassium. You need to drink plenty of water, but I mean, eat, eat the basic food groups, you know, foods, bread, cereals, rice, and pasta. Okay, you know the deal, stuff high in fiber. Now, aerobic exercise, uh, all this stuff works together. We learned what aerobic means uh, last time, which is meaning in the presence of oxygen. Uh, and you should, uh, in other words, a lot of people call it cardio, but you should include a low intensity, uh, you know, exercise, it's good for your muscles. One of the best things, um, I have an issue where uh, I can't run as much as I used to anymore because uh, uh, my knees and my feet from various things that I've done, like jumping out of planes and stuff. But I do swim. I swim laps. That's why I was so disappointed 
this past summer with COVID-19 because they closed our pool because I normally would go, go swim laps every day. Swimming is very good. It's low impact on your joints. And if you've ever seen uh, like Olympic swimmers, they're in great shape. But you got to, you know, you got to stick to it and kind of swim laps. Uh, sports like hockey, baseball, tennis are best ways to provide exercise. Best kept secret is hockey is like, you know, uh, hockey is like, it's like beyond running. Uh, skating up and down ice. That's why they have to go in shifts. The guys can't stay out there that long. But uh, I've known people that played ice hockey like all the time that could run like, I mean, they could run like a mile in like five minutes. I mean, it, it, it's just great shape uh, from skating up and down the ice. All right. I'm going to get into the target heart rate. All right. Tips for strengthening. Uh, begin every workout like with light aerobics activity uh observe uh one of the reasons people get hurt when they like lifting is they don't do proper technique normally they tell you how to do it uh i would uh also kind of wear like a supportive weight belt or something like that when you're lifting and uh, the bottom line is uh the breathing techniques if you go to it like they'll have a personal trainer at the gym to kind of show you the basics if you've never done it before. Breathing is important too. And then uh, normally, you, uh, I don't know if you guys work out very much, but you do it every other day because if when you get a good workout in, you're uh, you're tearing the muscle down and you need a day to recover. Okay. Uh, All right, uh, smooth muscles. Uh, once again, we just did different types of muscles. Smooth muscle is involuntary muscular movements and uh, it's stuff you don't have to think about like swallowing, your, uh, uh, digestion, the movement of your, uh, of your intestines and stuff like that. Skeletal muscles and um, one of the things, if you see the term striated or striped, I mean, that, that means that they look they have stripes in them. So when you, if you looked at it under a microscope, you'd be able to tell the difference between skeletal or smooth. And we, uh, the different types of muscles, muscles that, that close a joint or flexors, muscles that open a joint or extensors, uh, and that you can probably figure that out on your own. Cardiac muscle, special tissue that forms the walls of the heart. And the way, hands down, and, and uh, if I had normally, when we have you in the classroom, we I always pull the microscopes out and I have slides where you can look at the different types of muscle tissue. You can always tell uh, cardiac muscle tissue because it has uh, tons of mitochondria that you that are visibly see there, these little black dots. Because uh, skill, uh, cardiac muscle can never stop, can never rest, it has to have constant energy. That's why you gotta eat because uh, and you know it needs that glucose, that glucose uh, for the energy for your muscle cells because your heart can never rest. Even when you you're resting and you're sleeping, your heart still got to beat. Muscle tone is a natural tension fibers of a muscle. Tendonitis. If you ever have, once you get it, you'll know it. Uh, it's just uh, inflammation of the tendons, and it really there's nothing you can do, but like take anti-inflammatories and like you know put ice on it, compression. And elevate it, and, you, and whatever sport you play, whatever you're doing, that you got that, you got to stop for a while. Hernia is a protrusion of an organ or tissue through a weak area of muscle. Normally, it's um, it can be like a like part of your uh, from your in, in, in your area where your intestine the kind of pokes out through the muscle. It it hurts so when it goes out. People will be in pain, but they have. I mean, it's almost routine how they can go in and fix it now. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, this uh, video will be followed by a question and answer period. If you have any questions, please ask me. Also, I have office hours uh, later today from 2.45 to 3.15, where if you have any uh, pressing issues or pressing questions, you can ask me at that time.